Okay, so normally I get an email from the student indicating they, they want to work with me. So first of all, it's helpful that they've done some legwork, they've looked at my website, they know the kinds of things I'm interested in, so that's a, that's a good place to, to start. Uh, timeliness is also quite important. Uh, the, the worst thing is somebody approaches you the third week of the, the term that's already underway, indicating they want to do a thesis with you, and, and even worse, they want to do a full year thesis, so that they're starting uh, already uh, behind the eight ball. So it, it works better when they approach me uh, well ahead of time. So if they're on PEY, sometimes during the, the, sometimes during the PEY it tends to be a good time to approach me. And if they're in third year and, and aren't taking PEY, that's fine. I also get uh, students in first and second year you know, who are already starting to think uh, down the road and you know, I'm quite happy to, to, to talk to them. Okay, the main thing is enthusiasm. You know, when I introduce my areas of research and I go through my, my topics, uh, you really like to see their lights, uh, their eyes light up at, uh, at a particular topic. And that, that's half the battle if you're doing something that you're interested in. And, uh, you know, being able to find enough time to work on it uh, tends to take care of itself. So I think the main thing I'm looking for is, you know, an enthusiasm to want to do a research uh, project. Um, interest in the area um, and how also the students actually want to gain something from from their thesis experience so in an email really I'm just looking at you know they're very excited about the area they, they see potential of how they can contribute to it um, they've t they have some background or they've done at least some kind of research on their own about the area in general in one-on-one -on -one meetings um, you know I like to see that in kind of come out in person as well and that the students are not afraid of taking on challenges um, and doing something different than they're used to in their you know previous three years. Right, so I interview everyone that I'm interested <coughs> in possibly bringing into the lab. I treat it like any other job interview. I take it quite seriously um, and it's you know it ends up being competitive and not everybody that interviews will get a position. Um, what I'm looking for first thing I think is enthusiasm, sincere enthusiasm. So when a student comes in and we're, we're talking, and that's often a gut feel, but you can get it sort of in the, the ways they just talk about work that they've done in the past, ways they've in the way they talk about what their interests are, the way they respond to questions from me, or the way they ask questions. I want someone that's really going to be is really interested in the work we're doing, is really going to um, commit themselves to doing that work. Uh, thesis can be kind of a long haul at times, can be pretty frustrating at times, and unless you have the enthusiasm for the work you're doing, it's going to be a kind of a, a poor experience, I think. So number one for me is sincere, sincere enthusiasm. Um, I also always ask the student to describe a technical project that they worked on, and every student has something they can, they can talk about, either a summer research experience or a PEY or even a first year project that they worked on in a group. And it's important for me to 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 um, to hear you talk about your research, uh, to talk about a technical project, because um, that can give me a good understanding of how deep you understood that project. Were you just doing things you were told, or did you really understand what you were doing and why you were doing it? Um, responses to my questions can often be pretty informative about again your level of understanding. And then can you communicate it to me? I'm not going to be an expert, chances are, in the project you're talking mm -hmm. about. And can you communicate that to a non-expert? That's very important. Um, not using jargon or terms or concepts that are just you know, over my head. Uh, so I look for that as well. I think those are the two main things, enthusiasm and ability to, to communicate a, a, you know, about a technical project. So I mean, I would suggest, I mean, you'll get different answers from different professors about this, but speaking for myself, I mean, I appreciate a courteous but succinct email contact as the first contact. Um, if there's anything you're particularly proud of in your background, I would put it in there, you know, if there's a, someone you worked with on a PUI term or something, a, a personal reference that's a, a real expert that, you know, you want to offer, um, that's great. If you like top of your class, definitely put that in there. But beyond that, you know, just be succinct and to the point about, about what you're looking for. I think that's, that's what I appreciate anyway. So, I mean, I don't look, engage in a particularly protracted interview process. What I'm looking for is that the students done a, their homework, that they know what my background areas of interest are, that they're keen on those areas, uh, you know, that they're not just sort of shopping around and, and, and you know, because uh, then I start getting the feeling like I'm, I'm wasting my time. But, uh, but, you know, if they come prepared and, and with a sincere interest in, in what I generally work on, 
uh, and if I have the time, then I'm, I'm glad to supervise them. That's the main thing. That's the main thing I look for. I mean, they should have enough enough of an idea of their interests that they know that they're certainly interested in what I work on. But beyond that, um, I'm you know I'm perfectly happy to have just an open-ended conversation about what they might like to work on. I'll offer ideas, um, and uh, you know any, anything goes. It's fine with me. For me, the way to do it is to actually show up at the door of the professor's office and say hello. We get far too much email. The amount of email we get is such that students' um, emails aren't always given as much attention as they should, or even colleagues' emails aren't given as much attention as they should. So for me, the best way to do it is to actually show up at a student at the professor's door and introduce yourself, say, I'm so-and-so for engineering science. You may or may not have had a class with them, and ask them if they have any topics or any interest in dealing with thesis students. So I suggest students actually arrive at doors. Now, when they do it, they, some professors are hard to find, so with me, my door is always open. It's easy to do. Um, but with others who you can't get a hold of, you presumably have to send email to them. Now, the trouble is, that usually means you're limited to the students or professors that actually have had courses with. And that's a subset. It's often too small a subset. Um, but what I would suggest is, first of all, think about what you want to actually look at in your thesis. What kind of general area? I had a student one time who was a super fan of baseball. But he was doing a structural analysis thesis, so he analyzed part of the Rogers Center. And he came in saying, I want to do with the baseball thesis. And so we together agreed to do the Rogers Center. Anyway, so come up with some idea, and then come to whoever, uh, a professor that you know, or maybe me, whoever, uh, if you know me. If you don't know me, get lost. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> but anyways, if you have a professor, uh, show up at the door, and then ask them um, whether they're taking thesis students, and discuss the topics you're interested in. There's a good chance that the person will say, that's an interesting topic, but you know, you should really talk to Professor so-and-so. And, -so. and you basically get a personal recommendation. And then when you go to Professor so-and-so's office who you don't know, that person can be told, hey, I was told by Professor Benz to, um, to come and see you because I'd like to do a thesis about earthquake engineering or whatever. And so that way you can basically get personal contacts. That's that good old-fashioned networking that we all know and love. And so I recommend that people actually do it in person and actually um, get, advi get advice from the actual supervisors who other people are that they can actually speak. Most of the students who, who, who come to me for thesis um, are students whom I've taught in the past. And so they know a little bit about me, and I know a little bit about them. Um, they know that if they're going to do a thesis with me, it's going to involve some area of structural engineering. 95% of the time, it's going to involve something related to bridges. So if within that general framework, they come to me and they say, well, I have sort of a specific topic that I would like to work on, I'm happy to talk about that with them. Sometimes it'll turn out that it's something that really is not that suitable uh, for a thesis, and you know, I can tell them about that. Um, but usually they don't come with specific ideas of their own. They don't have to. Um, and uh, Usually, uh, usually I prefer to do full year thesis with students, and so um, if they come to me in the summer, a little bit before term starts, and we can talk a little bit, I can get an idea of what their interests are, what their future career goals are, um, and on that basis we can generally reach a good agreement on a, on a suitable topic, something that's interesting for them, something that's going to be motivating for me so that I can be enthusiastic about spending the time with them um, uh, that's required uh, to, to, to supervise a thesis. So students don't have to come with the topic. If they do, I'm happy to talk with them about the topic. Um, but I also regard the process of uh, sort of developing a topic together as as, as part of the thesis process. There usually isn't a lot of time to do that once term starts. Usually I prefer to have had at least a couple of, of short discussions with students um, beforehand, and then so that we can start right away in September um, working on the thesis itself. Thanks for watching. You might be interested in another video in this series, or you might want to watch the uncut full length interviews with our instructors. To do this, select pause to stop the video and then select on a button or an image.